Yo, what's going on, fam? So I've got a great one for you today. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you sub to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. If you're watching in the Facebook group, hit us with a like and share this or comment below. Let me know where you're from. Help us expand the reach. I do these videos for free. And this is all I ask you to do so we can share it to more people, right? So check this out. This is going to be a quick one. Um, we're going to talk about how overcoaching in the sales call is actually hurting the sale, right? Um, I used to, this was a major issue for me, guys, when I first started in sales. This was a big problem because when I would, especially when I switch industries, right, and I was going from selling door to door to business to consumer to, um, to the yellow pages, selling business to business, digital marketing, right out of the gate, anytime something uh, or something would come up in the sales call um, that I knew had some information on and I was selling a new product, I would get so amped. And then I would go in and, and throw up on the customer, right? Spill all my marbles in the lobby uh, is like the old school saying of that. So um, whenever you start to learn a lot about your product, and this is totally normal, guys, by the way, um, there's something called the learning curve or in some books and whatnot, they might call it the dummy curve, I believe. Uh, but basically the way it goes is you have where you're doing something on accident, okay? And... Whenever you're doing this on accident, you're closing a lot of deals, right? Um, I'm going to relate this to something else here in a second for anybody else that's in like, you know, different niches or whatever. So you do it by accident, and then over here on the other end, you do it on purpose, right? And then down here, you're learning. Okay? So what happens in the sale, and this happens a lot of the time, whenever you're hearing something in the sales call that you is a direct sign that that prospect can benefit from your solution, okay? So what happens is you hear those words and whatever they say, maybe you help people generate meetings, right? Maybe you help people set appointments. And they're telling you that they don't have a specific system to set appointments, but they feel like that's exactly what they need in order to get past that specific roadblock. So right out of the gate, you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I can help them, and then you start injecting everything into the conversation you can do to help them, right? You're talking about all the ways to optimize a profile, how to send DM messages, how many to send per day, uh, the things to stay away from, and you start like over coaching them in the call, okay? First of all, this actually devalues your sales call because it makes them believe that they have everything they need in order to solve the problem. So they, they will want to buy from you less, ironically, right? Uh, we're not going to talk about how to position uh, the sale at the end of the call to lead into making an offer. What we're going to talk about right now is just the fact that overcoaching and doing that will kill the sale, all right? So as you get more familiar with how much information to give in the call, which is not much, and I'll explain why in a sec, you have to understand that you will more than likely hit this part of the learning curve where you're starting to apply the principles to get things you know, done correctly, that will actually like decrease your sales a little bit, which is totally normal, right? Um, and this is similar to like when I was in high school, um, you know, I was like 190 pounds and my max deadlift was 315 pounds, okay? And I was really strong in high school because I was naturally strong, okay? But when I went into powerlifting and competing in powerlifting competitively at a world's level, right, when I was uh, 19 years old, I was able to drop down to the 160-pound weight class and deadlift 500 pounds to qualify me for worlds. But when I first was learning the right form, right here, my deadlift actually tanked because I was learning how to do it properly. But then once I got the form down, I was able to completely skyrocket my maxes, even though I weighed less, because now I was actually able to continuously increase right, my performance because I actually had form, something to follow. That's what happens in your sales process when you're going through the actual sales call flow. What happens is as you start to learn these things, you're go more than likely your sales are going to dip. Okay? Um, and if you don't do this, right, if you don't understand that this is going to happen, what ends up happening is you keep living in this world where you're accidentally closing deals and you think you're an expert, and then you continue to overcoach. So what ends up happening is, 
even though you feel like you're crushing it, you could be getting way more deals by not running into these specific obstacles, right? Because you have convinced yourself that living in this world is good. And you don't want to have to learn something new. But what happens is if you can nail these things, these core elements, you're going to be able to come over here and you're going to get way more deals way more often with way more different types of buyers. Okay, this is what makes you an expert. Experts know the most and say the least. Okay, so when it comes down to overcoaching in the sales call, what you're going to learn is if you can just hear them, acknowledge, right, uh, agree, acknowledge, and reframe what they say, let them know that you're going to answer it at the end of the call and then some advice at the end of the call and that you're taking notes. All right, people want to buy from people that understand them. People buy things when they feel heard. Okay, so your goal here, there's a saying that I have for this, and it's you can never listen yourself out of the sale. You can never, if you take anything from this video, you can never listen yourself out of the sale. People want to be understood. Okay, this is something overlooked. And this is something you could take into real life too, right? People just want to be understood. So if you can get to a point where you're not trying to give as much advice as possible during the sales call, this is going to add more value to you at the very end when you give advice because you're giving advice to all the key things that they are currently focusing on or prioritize or that would create the most impact. You're only giving your advice to those components. Those are the only things that matter, okay? And you wanna make sure that you're not over coaching at the end of the call when you give advice, because if you do, nine times out of 10, you will lose the sale. And the reason why is because at the end of the call, they're, they're in a hypnosis, okay? The same way like Tony Robbins can get everyone to raise their hand, stand up, and it's just he creates these riots of people I wanna buy from him, right? Selling from stage, it's, it's a hypnosis throughout the whole thing to where people become so bought in that they, they more than likely will say yes because they are in a, a much greater stage of believing in themselves and believing in you and believing in your product or service that they buy. Okay, that's why you'll typically get a sale on the call rather than like getting a sale, sending a contract and expecting them to send it back over because that feeling is gone. Right? There's a saying in sales, sell when the emotion is high. Well, that's part of that concept. So if you inject something that they are unfamiliar with at the end of the call when you're giving advice, what ends up happening is they are going to fall out of that trance because now you're getting them to think about something that they do not understand. And they, even if they understand it, it's something they're unfamiliar with, so now they have to think about that thing. And even if they were still interested in buying from you, if they have to think about something new, what ends up happening is it takes them away from actually, like actually being able to invest with you right then and there. Because now their focus is gone. It's on something else. So you need to make sure that when you're at the end of the call and you give your advice, that it's almost like a value stack in a webinar. If you've ever been through a webinar, you'll notice at the end they hit you with a value stack. And you're just like, Wow, value, 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 value. Oh my gosh, I need a buy. Well, that's similar to the advice you give at the end of the call, right? So can I lend some advice or do you just want to talk about next steps? And they say, I'd love to hear some advice. You go in, you talk about each bullet point that you wrote down in the notes that they brought up to you. And then from there, you're able to say, does all that make sense? Like, can you, do you, did you take any value from what I said there? Does any of it seem actionable? Does any of it seem realistic? They're always going to say, yeah, it is, yeah, it is, yeah, it is. Okay, great. So what would you like to do from here? Well, how do I get started? Well, what is a way to, to look like working with you guys? Like they start asking those buying questions. So if you can do it in this way with that kind of flow, you won't overcoach. You'll add more value to your sales call. You'll shrink your sales call duration. And then you'll be able to become an expert and close more deals more often by saying less and listening yourself into the sale. So... Um, that's, that's what I got for you guys on this training here. If you have any questions, drop them below. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll come back and answer those questions. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, 
then uh, drop your questions below. I can answer them for you right now. Um, I actually like the video here too. And if you're watching this, heart the video. We've had about a dozen or so people on the whole time. So heart the video, help us expand the reach so more people can see this. That's the only favor I ask of you guys. Same thing on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and share the video. Uh, that's why I make these free videos, which are typically more information than most thousand dollar courses that you'll buy. Um, and it's, it's pretty high level information, right? This is something that feels like a small thing, but if you can master this by saying less and then actually saying what you need to at the right point in time, you will actually increase your value in the sales call, not just add more value to what you're selling and making it easier to buy, but adding more value to you as the expert, okay? Experts don't throw up all their information on everybody. Look at Mr. Miyagi, right? <laughs> if you guys watch Karate Kid, you don't see him like saying like, no, you need to kick this way. No, your form's wrong here. No, do this. He fixed one thing at a time, okay? So if you take anything from this video, one degree of change can change your life because if you create one degree of change 30 days a month, you created 30 degrees of change, right? That's, that's 30 different things you've improved on throughout the month. I don't know if it was Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. I think it was Bruce Lee that said, I would rather practice one kick per day than practice 1,000 kicks in one day, okay? So anyway, guys, hope this was super, super helpful. Um, and Blake actually has one question on here before I jump off. How can you typically tell when they're on an emotional high? Um, whenever they're super engaged in the conversation, you'll know that they're emotionally invested. Okay, it's not necessarily the high because if you sell on an emotional high, which is like selling on hype, typically that will lead to buyer's remorse and a higher rate of refunds and um, chargebacks. So you wanna make sure that you're selling when they're emotionally invested, right? Not on hype. Remember, we keep our tone and cadence the same throughout the whole call. Okay, this allows us to be able to control the heart rate a little bit the same way a DJ does. Remember, like DJs will come in. We teach this to our private clients in the art of sales, which by the way, if you guys want some assistance with that so we can help you scale your sales, just go ahead and click a link below uh, in the description and we'll be able to get you on a call with us. But the same way a DJ can increase your heart rate by raising the tone of the music, and then when it gets to a certain point, your beats per... Your, heart, your beats per uh, minute, beat, heart rate, beat, I don't know, <laughs> no, I'm drawing a blank, but it's going so fast, they control your body. Uh, we do the same thing with our tone. That's how we control the call. Keep it steady the whole time. Keep their decisions rational because they have a steady heart rate. Um, and then, yeah, the, that's how you create emotional investment. They're asking questions that are, that are logical and meaningful, so they're emotionally invested. All right, fam, hope that was helpful. Again, share the video. Give us a thumbs up. Um, and it's so this way more people can see it and I'll catch you on the next one.